And the president of the New York Fed says the Fed can pull off a soft landing for the U.S. economy. Note I say can. A half point rate rise last week, part of the series of hikes planned. In the EU, rates remain unchanged, but calls are growing for the ECB to start raising rates as early probably as July, according to the president of Germany's Bundesbank. Says he believes that rate rise should be sooner rather than later. He speculates July. Shamik Taha is the chief economist for BNY Mellon and investment management. He's with me from Surrey. Uh, now, here we go. Look, the, the BOE has had four. The US has had two. Uh, the ECB will have a couple probably before the end of the year. But this complexity of dealing with inflation at a time of weakness, stagflation, do you see recession? I think we're getting there. I think we're getting close. I think there's a sense in which the chickens may be coming home to roost. Um, lots of people argue about whether the Fed's about to make a policy error. I think the policy error has already been made. Essentially, uh, you know, we left policy too easy for too long. And, and at least part of the inflation that we're seeing now is, 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 is that. And I don't know we're there yet, but there's, it's looking increasingly like we'll have to generate a, a really sharp slowdown in order to get inflation back under control. The, the problem is the events driving it are not your classic demand-led uh, boom, in a sense. You've got the supply chain issues ex-China. Well, there's not much you can do. And you've got the war... And that could last, God forbid, longer, but that cuts pressure. So, you know, sure, explain to me, the, the raising of rates will cure inflation, but it won't cure the problem that's caused it. Um, that's true to, a, to, to some extent, I think, Richard. I mean, certainly there are big supply, what you call supply influences, on inflation at the moment, the supply chain breakdown, mm -hmm. you know, the state of the labor market in the US, et cetera, et cetera. However, I'd quibble a little bit. I'd say actually a lot, you know, a, a bigger part of the inflation than most people are talking about is down to what, what I just described, the fact that rates were left too low for too long and, and there was too much QE done. And so some of it is actually right. demand-led. If you, if you look at nominal spending in the US, it's, it's, it's way high. It's way higher. So, in your view, does ra I, I, and central bankers hate it when we use the phrase tightening? They talk about uh, merely returning rates to normality or neutrality. Will the raising of rates to a neutral level or a normal level, will that be sufficient to, uh, because it's coming from such a low base, to squeeze out the inflation? Or will we have to go beyond and actually tighten? I, I, I don't think neutral is nearly enough, to be honest. I think we'll have to go into positive territory, you know, positive, you know, tightening territory. You say they don't want to use the word, but that's essentially where they're going to have to go. Um, and, you know, for, for that reason, you know, it seems to me there are potentially surprises ahead still uh, for the bond and equity market, simply because, you know, there's quite a lot of tightening to be done. 3% or thereabouts may not be enough. You see, 3% arguably would take you to neutrality, depending on what your definition is. But can you see rates going to four, four and a half? Look, it's a, it's a difficult call. I think neutral is probably around two, between two and a half and three. Um, I think, I suspect they'll have to go to roughly 1% higher than that. Um, so three and a half is definitely in play. Do I discount four or even slightly higher than four? Absolutely not, because we've had right. so many surprises recently. Right. I, I, think, I think you have to keep that in mind. So, Shami, what happens, though, if... What happens if the economic situation worsens because of, say, for example, God forbid the war in Ukraine gets worse or China has a greater slowdown? If you're then balancing the, 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 the risks... Um, do you delay your, did you basically live with the inflation? Because if you deal with the inflation whilst the worsening wider economic, then you've got, then you've got a great recession. I mean, possibly, but you know, that, that really bucks the trend that, you know, what central banks have been saying they do for the past 25, 30 right. years, they, they target inflation, right? And, you know, the fact is they haven't really been tested in this way 
uh, for quite some time. And so I think the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. If, if you know, we do have to generate a significant slowdown, and if we do have to push rates into significantly positive territory, will tightening territory, will they be prepared to push through? At the moment, from the rhetoric, I suspect they will. Um, I've sounded a little bit alarmist. I'm not, I don't mean to sound too alarmist. I think, you know, there's still potential for things to slow down on of its own accord. But, but you know, the longer time goes by and we get these inflation surprises to the upside, the more worried I am about that kind of scenario.